Hello, this is Paul from QuickAndMobile.com, and in this video, we are going to go over purchasing tips to avoid getting scammed when you're shopping for a wheelchair online or any other medical mobility device for that matter. So before we start, let's go ahead and take an opportunity to pause this video to learn where to find us online. Okay, that opportunity and moment has passed. So what we're doing is online purchasing tips to avoid getting ripped off and become a savvy online shopper. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sit back down in this Electra 7 power folding wheelchair that holds up to 400 pounds. We have done many videos on the Electra 7 or all of our folding power wheelchairs. So if you would like more information, you can of course subscribe to our channel or, or browse different videos or even go to our website that we just showed you and find plenty of information there. However, this video results from countless telephone calls, countless chat interactions with people that have felt that they have been slighted when they have been shopping around for medical mobility equipment. So we've learned a lot ourselves in this process and what we're doing is we're doing everything in our power and ability in this video to help you make a better informed decision. Whether it would be for one of our chairs or whether it would be for a different company, we just want you to be informed. So there's definitely some pitfalls to become very aware of. And many people have indicated that they watch our videos more than once before they make a purchasing decision. So this would be one of the videos that you would want to get a piece of paper and something to write with because these are all very valid points and if you have a computer or your phone that you're looking at, you can find a lot of information right at your fingertips. So for starters, when you're bargain shopping, are you really getting a bargain? That's what we're gonna talk about first. I've heard that you get what you pay for. So the first thing that we're gonna look at if we're bargain shopping, is to be cautious about third-party vendors. So what is a third-party vendor? Now, a lot of people, let's just take, for example, Walmart.com or Amazon.com. Those are very familiar brands. Amazon is one of the largest, if not the largest, online shopping conglomerate on the internet today. And Walmart.com also is a place where you could go and search for just about anything. Now, the common assumption that a lot of people make is that if you're buying it from Amazon, it's coming from Amazon. Or if you're buying it from Walmart, it's coming from Walmart. What a lot of people don't understand is that just about any person, any individual or any business, you would have to read the fine print of Amazon or Walmart, can open up shop as if it's one giant flea market on Amazon and on Walmart and borrow the name Amazon.com selling their merchandise and their wares through Amazon.com with Amazon's terms and conditions and Amazon processing payments for them or the same thing with Walmart. Now what a lot of people don't understand when, when they do it this way is that they might find a chair that would be similar to the Electra 7 or look similar to the Electra 7. It might hold up to 400 pounds. It might have dual 250 watt brushless electromagnetic motors. It might fold up. It might have the same appearance in many ways. Most likely not the batteries in the actual frame of the chair. Um, but it might look similar and it might be for a lower price. Now, a lot of people think this is great, but it's great until you actually get the device and you have some sort of issue that you need customer service with. And then you go back and you realize, well, Amazon doesn't have a telephone number, and if you read the fine print, it's not Amazon that sold you that chair. It's a third-party vendor that sold you that chair, and they may or may not have parts for that chair. For example, what if you need a joystick to be replaced and you purchase from a third-party vendor that's using Amazon.com and they tell you, no, we don't have joysticks. We have the whole chair. And what if that small little company doesn't have a telephone number, which a lot of them don't? 
or they have a telephone number that nobody ever returns your telephone call, or they just have no way of getting in touch with them in, in, besides filling out a form on Amazon.com, and you get absolutely no customer service. Now, the only reason I bring this up is because this has happened. This has happened to people that have called our company asking us to help for chairs that look similar to things that they may have purchased through a third party vendor using Amazon or using Walmart. And unfortunately, we don't have the ability to help them out. And another thing that a lot of people don't understand about these third party vendors is they can be from a different country altogether. They're not necessarily domiciled in the United States of America. They could, a lot of companies that are operating from China or from Japan or from Russia or from any other country can be using Amazon.com or using Walmart.com to sell their merchandise and you would have no idea that you're purchasing from a company that is not a local company that does not store their inventory in the United States of America. So where does your device come from? We know these chairs are made in China, but when you purchase from Quick and Mobile, they come from the United States of America. We have a whole warehouse full of these chairs and full of every single accessory and every single part necessary for a repair. A lot of companies can't say that same thing. So that is a very big consideration point. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next thing. Don't get fooled by reviews. Now notice how I didn't say positive or negative reviews. Just don't get fooled by reviews in general. Now a lot of people at this point in time, if you're like me, you've done shopping online before. You've probably been a vendor or you've probably been a customer of more than one company. Maybe three or four companies, maybe a whole bunch of different companies at this stage. I know a lot of the shopping that I do, I do shopping online. I, I patronize all sorts of different businesses for all sorts of different needs online. I don't ever have to leave the house if I don't want to. And some companies, they'll send the merchandise and I'll never hear from them again. And if, if I need help, I, I can contact them. They have an email, they have a phone number. Those are typically the only types of companies that I'll, I'll purchase from. But some of these companies, I'll make the purchase and this is where this is where it gets don't get fooled by reviews i'll get email after email after email after email to review their wares that i just purchased they'll send me emails until i want to just shut them up by writing a review because i hope that i never get another email from that company or if you use a website like verbo or airbnb if you ever travel you will get an endless amount of follow-up emails to leave a review for the host. So reviews are not always done out of the kindness of somebody's heart. A positive review. In, in fact, a lot of positive reviews are the result of some sort of incentivization or incentives for, for writing a review or an endless amount of pestering to write a review. Now, Quick and Mobile, we don't do that. We don't ask you for a review. We have a very strong idea that people will do their research, they'll do their due diligence, and they don't need to be getting bombarded with emails or telephone calls to write a review, and they don't need to be getting bribed by Quick and Mobile to write a review. Now, another thing that I'll talk about, and this, this applies to just about anything, but there's a a few local restaurants in the area and they all have a lot of different reviews uh, available online. Some of them are great reviews and then you get the reviews that there's a certain amount of people that this meal tasted like leather, that meal at this restaurant tasted like an old boot and I'm thinking geez is, is this really I mean it seems like if, if you look at the certain people the entire menu tastes like the old stale leather at this restaurant and this other restaurant across town, it's the same thing. The entire menu is a bunch of just old stale leather. So is it the restaurant hiring people to write reviews or is it genuine reviews? I don't know. I, I don't have any way of telling and, and neither do you. So moving forward, the next thing is where does your merchandise come from? 
where does your merchandise come from? So if we're getting past third-party vendors, let's just say that you have a, a company that they, they do have a website in the United States of America, and they look like they have an address in the United States of America, they look like they have a telephone number in the United States of America, but where does the actual merchandise come from? Now, the first couple things I said, I'm, I'm going to circle around back to that in just a little bit because there's a few really important points that I would like to make. But where does it come from? Does, does, do they have just maybe the apparatus that's stored in the United States of America? And if you need to have a repair or a replacement part, what happens then? Is that, is that something that you, could you get another joystick? Could you get uh, a wheel? Could you get a fork? We have all those parts in our warehouses. What about a new motor? Could you get a new motor? We have those parts in our warehouses. We have the fenders in our warehouses. We even have the wheels stocked in our warehouses. We have the actual uh, the armrests in the warehouses. Every single part that you see on this wheelchair, we have stocked. And the rare times that we have things that are on back order, they're coming in. We have things always in transit. We stock everything. A lot of these companies, you, you, they might appear that they're a, an operating company, but when you get on the telephone with them, if you can get somebody on the phone, you want to know what about inventory? What about the parts? Do you have the parts? Where does the device come from, and where do the parts specifically come from? Because if they can't give you a clear-cut answer, and you need a part, what makes you think that you're going to be able to get a clear-cut answer, or even a part, come time to get the part? So where does it ship from? Does it ship from the States, or does it ship from somebody else? Now, the next big thing that we're going to look at is, is the company incorporated? Is it a United States company that you're purchasing from? This is really important. This goes into a Better Business Bureau profile as well. So there's companies that you'll, you'll look on their website and they'll give you a telephone number. It might be a local telephone number. It, it might have uh, what appears to be a storefront even or some sort of local address. And you would guess that they're a United States corporation. Hey, they've got a phone number, they've got a website, they, they look like they have everything. And what I'm going to show you next is, is kind of a, what I would feel a double-edged sword. Because even though the Better Business Bureau can be used to validate whether or not a United States corporation exists or not, we don't support the Better Business Bureau. We don't like the Better Business Bureau because we don't feel that they're a valid tool to get an idea of what kind of company you're actually doing business with. Now, in the 80s, in the 70s, in the 60s, in the early 90s, in times before there was online shopping, in times when commerce happened locally, then the Business Bureau took on a different dynamic altogether. You could go into your local chamber of commerce and you could inquire about what sort of goodwill does this business have. And they would be able to tell you the, what the local people say in the community about this business. Oh, these people, they've been around for forever, for multiple generations, and they're great. Or these people, they're new, but so far they're great. They've got nothing but positive feedback. Or these people, they have, you know, a lot of people locally don't like them. Better Business Bureau now, they, they definitely want your money from the standpoint of a vendor. So they, they want the vendors to pay the money. And the issue is a lot of people will go and air their dirty laundry on the Better Business Bureau. So if a customer has a complaint for whatever reason and you can't make everybody happy 100% of the time, we try, but that's just not the way that it works in this world. You can't always make people happy 100% of the time. So the very few amount of people that you can't make happy can go to the betterbusinessbureau.com and they can either leave a negative review or they can have three or four of their friends leave a negative review that's, so one person becomes 
three people or four people all of a sudden, which has happened, and all of a sudden you you don't get a real accurate idea and a real accurate understanding of that business, how much volume that they've done. I mean, there's a lot of volume that Quick and Mobile does, but you would never understand the the breadth of what Quick and Mobile is by looking at a website that a few of the people that have taken issue for whatever reason would go to make their complaints because they're angry and they want to hurt you or they want to harm you because that happens. We of course respond to everything, all reviews we respond to, some companies don't. And if you don't respond to the review, they give you an, an F rating. Is that a good indication of, of how good the business is? No, it's not. It's, it, it only tells you, the only thing that it tells you, and this is something to really understand and write down, is does that company support the Better Business Bureau or do they not support the Better Business Bureau? Because the Better Business Bureau, guess what? They have their hand outstretched and they want to get paid. They keep a database of all the valid corporations, however. So that's really important to know. You could go to bbb.org, you have to type in, in the search bar, you have to type the city that the business is in, so you would go to the company's website, you would type that city and you would type the name in, and if nothing comes up, guess what? There's no incorporation. There's, there's no business. You, their website might say there is, but they're not actually incorporated. So who are you giving your money? And where are they storing their items? So that's really important. And just because somebody has a United States address and a telephone number does not mean that that equates to United States business. So just because somebody has a United States address and phone number does not mean that it equates to United States business. Here's the issue. With internet nowadays, you can get what's called VoIP, voice over internet protocol, telephone. So if, if Quick and Mobile wanted to operate in Australia or the UK, we can get numbers in Australia. We can get telephone numbers in Australia that ring right to our United States offices. And you would think that we're an Australian company because we can get an Australian post office or an Australian mailing address. And a lot of mailing addresses, they're not P.O. box. That, that's the way that things used to be. There's companies that specialize in having an address and whatever zip code you would want, they'll give you STE or suite number. That doesn't mean that it's an actual suite, an office. It just means that it's a mail center that will give somebody the ability to appear that they're operating a United States business even though they might be halfway around the world. So it's very important to understand that because if the person's not operating a United States business, they have no physical presence in the United States, they can sell you a device, what's going to happen when you need service on it? What's going to happen when you don't understand how to do something with that device? We don't know. You wouldn't know either. But a lot of these companies, where they really get you, especially with, with the COVID pandemic, is they're, they're a bargain. It looks like it's a steal. Why, why go to, to Quick and Mobile when I can go and save a few hundred dollars and, and get something that looks somewhat similar to a Quick and Mobile chair? Well, that might be great until you would actually need to get service for that chair. And that's when the fun and games begin. That's, that's our experience. And we get these phone calls all the time. That's the only reason that I'm taking the time to actually make this video. So we've got a couple more points here. Avoid tricky lingo, okay? Avoid tricky lingo. Now, I'll give you a great example here. What sounds better? Two 250 watt motors or 500 watt motor. Now I could say that I have 500 watts of motor power here. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily tell the truth. That doesn't say things in, in a concise way. That The truth is you have one, two, 250 watt motors. It doesn't have a 500 watt motor. Just because somebody would think that the wheelchair has more power, that doesn't mean it's better for the battery life. This is an FDA approved machine. 
And guess what? This machine is not allowed to go over four miles per hour. Not this type of wheelchair. So we could tell you the truth and say it goes up to four miles per hour because it has an adjustable speed indicator. Okay. We can turn the joystick on and we can basically adjust the speed indicator. Or we can say that it goes under five miles per hour. The device goes under five miles per hour. Both are being truthful in their own regard. But the second one, if I say that this goes under five miles per hour, I'm putting the term out there. I'm throwing out, hey, five miles per hour. It might not go five miles per hour, it goes under, it might go one mile per hour, it might go two miles per hour. But that's an example of what I would consider to be tricky lingo. So if there's, if there's something that you don't necessarily understand, and like weatherproof is another big thing. Really, really, really big thing. There is not a single manufacturer, unless there's something brand new that I've never heard of, that has a chair that's waterproof. If it was waterproof, guess what you could do with it? You could take it in the swimming pool. You could use it as an aquatic chair and you could totally submerge it in the water. That's waterproof. Nobody makes a waterproof chair. People make weather resistant chairs. This is a weather resistant chair. It's raining outside right now. If I got stuck in the rain, and I have the umbrella attachment on, I'm not worried. I'm not worried if some moisture gets on the chair. That's fine. It's designed to be weatherproof. It, and, and it is. And it's very good at what it does. Is this an aquatic chair? Is it waterproof? Does that encourage me to drive in the water? If somebody told me, hey, it's waterproof, I'm going to think, great! I can take it anywhere. Uh, but that's not the case. Now, the other issue is, and this, is, this goes right into what I was talking about with Tricky Lingo, is what happens with the warranty and the customer service? How is that handled? Such a big deal. Such a huge deal. Do you call up a telephone number and have an online form that can be submitted so everything can be documented and things can be expeditiously dealt with? Or... In a lot of cases, if, if you believe that the chair was a waterproof chair and you, you tested it, and guess what? It no longer works. There was some sparks and there was nothing lights up and nothing works. And you call the company that told you that it was fully waterproof. And you might get an email back saying that, well, that's great, but the warranty is handled with the manufacturer. Well, where's the manufacturer? Well, they're in China. So how do I get a hold of them? That's kind of when you hear crickets. How do I get a hold of them? Oh, you can look at the manual that came with the chair. You know, so then all of a sudden, you're, you're stuck trying to, you're, you're chasing a dragon, really. You know, and by the time you would explain that, well, I, I went into the, to the river with the chair, or I, I took it in the swimming pool or whatever I did because, you know, so and so and such and such said in their advertising material that it was waterproof. Um, and the manufacturer says, no, it's not waterproof. That's not a warranty issue. Where, where do you go there? You know, the person that you gave your money to, they're, they're long gone. You're not getting that money back. And then you have, you're, you're back to square one. You thought that you were getting a bargain, but you, you, you get what you pay for. And you're out that money. And then all of a sudden you have the same obstacle that you had before you even started. I need to become mobile. And I'm not mobile. And now I, I had a chair and it was ruined. Or what happens if Again, with the warranty and the customer service, is, is, there, is there transparency? With us, it's very simple. If it's, a, if it's a warranty issue, most of these parts you can see just come right off. I mean, with the armrest, for example, there's one screw, two screws, so it takes somebody five minutes 
you know, that's a part that can be sent out. Most of these parts can be sent out. Major catastrophes, like something that would be catastrophic or that we think that we might be chasing a dragon around, is, it, it happens periodically, very rare. But what we would do is we would just, instead of even sending a local technician to try to diagnose the chair, we want the fastest and we want the most efficient way to deal with it. So we would, at our expense, pick the chair up at your home, have it repaired in our facility or replaced, and send it back at our expense. That's going to be faster than the other methods. Somebody coming out, doing a diagnosis that may or may not be totally correct, sending parts out, having them schedule an in-home visit again with the COVID pandemic, which is next to impossible. It's not the fastest and most efficient way. So we're looking for fast, we're looking for efficient. Or in the rare case that somebody does need to come to your home, that's the fastest and most efficient, that's what happens. That's how Quick and Mobile handles it. And, it's very, and, and we're very upfront about it. We put it in our literature and you can give us a telephone call, we'll tell you that, and we're publishing it right in our videos. But when people on their website make very bold claims that there's all these magical things that this chair can do, that their chair can do something that nobody else's chair can do, but you have to address the issue with the manufacturer that tells me that you're not being a savvy shopper. And you don't want to get burned and understand that in retrospect. So again, this is Paul from QuickitMobile.com. I really appreciate taking the time to watch this entire video. Great opportunity to pause the video where you can learn to find this online. Feel welcome to give us a telephone call. Okay, that moment has passed. And it was our intention, it was our goal to give you a few tips and a few pointers so you can understand as you're in the process of shopping for a chair, how to make an informed decision that you're going to be happy with for a long time to come. Thank you so much.